Good evening, Faith family and friends and all of our live stream viewers. We thank you for tuning in tonight to our Wednesday night Bible study series. Tonight ends our series. We've been sharing from the theme, How to Feed on God's Word for the entire month of April. We hope that these lessons have been a blessing to you and your family and to all of our live stream viewers. So tonight we're going to end our series. And so before we do, let's bow in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this opportunity to come together and to connect by way of live stream. We ask your blessings upon every individual that's connecting tonight. We pray your blessings upon our lesson, that the word will be shared with simplicity and with power, and that each of us will receive from it tonight. So we thank you and we praise you that we can study and grow by way of your word. We give you praise what you will say in say tonight. So let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's dive into tonight's lesson. Our April lesson series has been how to feed on God's word, how to feed on God's word. And so tonight it takes us to lesson number five, our final lesson in this series. And so tonight's lesson is going to be five reasons for a loss of hunger for God's word. Five reasons for a loss of hunger for God's word. So let me give you a foundation scripture for tonight's study. Found in Luke chapter 6, verse 21. It simply says, blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who hunger now for you shall be filled. That's Luke's rendition of chapter, uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 21. And so hunger is a good sign of a thriving Christian. Did you know that? Hunger is a good sign of a thriving Christian. Any Christian that's going to thrive and grow and develop to be all that God intended and planned for us to be must thrive and must hunger for the Word of God. Apart from the Word of God, we will not grow. Apart from the Word of God, we will not develop to be all that God has destined for us to be. We need God's Word. So that's why Jesus plainly stated, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so we need the Word of God to, suffi to survive and thrive. And so that's a good sign, hunger. Hunger, craving for God's word, is a good sign for a thriving, growing, Bible-believing, standing on the word of God Christian. Now, loss of appetite for God's word implies the absence of hunger for reading, memorizing, and study the Bible. When you lose your appetite, that's what happens. There's no Bible study reading. There's no meditation of God's word and because there's an absence of hunger. So throughout this Bible study series, our goal was to develop a hunger in you for the Word of God. To develop a hunger for the Word of God. Because if there is no hunger for the Word of God, you're not going to eat. Just like physically, if you're not hungry for something, or if you're not hungry, you're not going to, to eat. You have a loss of appetite. And when you lose appetite, a lot of physical things happen, and a lot of spiritual things happen as well. But loss of appetite... But God's word implies an absence uh, of hunger for reading, memorizing, and studying the Bible. Now, lack of desire for reading God's word may result in stunted spiritual growth, weakened faith, and disobedience to God. When we fail to read the word of God, it's going to result in what I just stated. Uh, there's going to be... Uh, you're going to, your faith will be weak. You'll be in disobedience to the word of God and there'll be stunted spiritual growth. You'll be the same size spiritually that you were last month, last year, or two years ago. In order to grow in the word of God, there must be a constant feeding on the word of God. So tonight I want to share with you some, and some reasons for loss of appetite. For the word of God. There has to be some things that are getting in our way. That's causing us not to study. 
not to meditate and read on the Word of God. So I want to identify with you tonight five reasons uh, and present that to you as to why we lack hunger for the Word of God. Six reasons for loss. I said five, but six reasons for the loss of appetite for God's Word. You see, a reduced desire to feed on Scripture includes several things. So that's what I want to discuss tonight. A reduced desire to feed on, on the Scriptures includes several things. Number one, it includes ignorance. That is a lack of knowledge. That is a lack of knowledge. Many believers do not understand the need for strengthening the relationship with God. They figure they can do it just by going to church occasionally, by praying to God occasionally, and reading the Bible occasionally. And so as a result of that, they are ignorant of the Word of God, the way of God, and the will of God. If you want to know God's word, God's will, and God's way for your life, and what God is speaking, what God is saying today, you need to stay informed and stay in touch. And one way to do it is through the word of God. The prophet Hosea, Hosea declared in chapter 4, verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Notice it's passed down to generations. If the fathers and the priests are not feeding on the word of God, then it's going to affect their children or the next generation. And so what happens, the enemy comes in and he's able to destroy us because we are ignorant of God's word. And the Bible says we ought not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So some way, so some, so the way to stay on top of things and the way to have an edge over the devil and over life circumstances is that we need to be truly informed of what God says in his word, what God promises in his word, and what God will do and will not do in his word. So there's no reason for us as Christians to be ignorant of the word of God the will of God, or the way of God. So spending time in developing an appetite for the Word of God will erase this ignorance. It will cause us to be smart. It will cause us to become wise in the things of God. So one of the reasons why our appetite is reduced is because of ignorance. Either we don't know or we don't want to know. And so we get ourselves involved in a whole lot of other things except for the Word of God. And so, to build up our appetite and wanting to know the things of God, we need to get into the Word of God. So, ignorance or lack of knowledge reduces our desire to feed on Scripture and on the Word of God. Number two, a reduced desire to feed on Scripture includes a busy schedule. So, let's park here for a moment. Yes, a busy schedule. Being too busy at work in the home, and even at church can crowd your time for personal Bible reading. We become so busy, busy, busy throughout the day that we have good intentions to read, read the Word of God, to read the Bible, but we never get around to it because we're so busy. So busyness can be an enemy to you and I feeding on the Word of God. And so we need to figure out ways in which we're going to spend time in the Word of God. And so there's a scripture reference that you guys know about, which is Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. It's the story of Martha and Mary. The Bible says, beginning at verse 38, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. So Jesus comes into the house of Martha. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Notice she sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But the Bible says Martha was distracted with much serving. Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Tell her to leave 
the, her position of sitting at your feet to come help me do the chores in the kitchen or around the house. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. So here it is, we have Martha busy serving. Busy, no doubt, washing dishes, sweeping the floor, preparing a meal, or whatever it might be. She had on her apron as a servant and was busy, busy, busy in her house. On the other hand, we have Mary who sees Jesus and as he comes in, she sits at his feet and no doubt says, Master, Master, tell me some things. I want to understand things in ways of the kingdom. So Jesus began to share and speak to Mary who was sitting at his feet. And Martha did not like what was happening. Will you agree tonight that most of the time we resemble Martha more than Mary? We are so busy, 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 and sometimes we're just busy about doing, that we're busy doing nothing. Uh, do you ever struggle to make time for God? So this is what's happening in the text. Making time for God. Mary could have decided to get up and go help Martha in whatever she was doing, but she took advantage of Jesus. She took advantage of the opportunity to sit under the word and be informed. God is not satisfied with our leftovers. And so we can't spend all of our days and all of our time during the day doing what we want to do and then give God five minutes. God does not want that. Even though we might be satisfied with that, God wants more than five minutes of our time. So we can't tell him, Lord, you know, I have this to do, I have that to do. And sometimes we create our own busy schedule. We create our schedule. And so what we need to do is create a schedule, a balanced schedule, where we're finding time to sit and read and study and meditate on the Word of God. So God's not satisfied with our leftovers. He wants to be our number one priority. We know this because often we quote the scripture, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto us. God wants to be number one in our lives and God wants to be number one throughout our day. So here's a quote. God does not want part of you part of the time. He wants all of you all of the time. So while Martha was busy doing chores around the house, she could have said, I'm listening, Jesus. Go ahead, Jesus. I like that. I hear you. But no, she was busy, busy, busy doing what she wanted to do or what she thought was right to do or what was needed to do while Mary was front and center, sitting at the feet of Jesus, absorbing all of the wisdom and knowledge that he was spewing out. Remember, when Jesus speaks, he doesn't waste words. He says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And no doubt, maybe Mary recognized that she needed life. She, she needed something for that day, for that moment. Maybe she was going through something. And Jesus came in and was just the right antidote for her situation. Here's a quote. If we were to ask a person who claims to be a Christian, how long is it since you enjoy real communion with Jesus? He or she would find it difficult to answer. When was the last time you had real communion with Jesus? When was the last time you really sat down and laid aside some time to spend time in the Word? The great mass of those who claim to be Christians are too much taken up with the world. Too busy, too careful too frivolous, or too unbelieving. They could feast every day upon the bread of heaven, but they prefer to starve or fill their mouths with the husk of the earth. Martha could have taken off her apron. She could have put the dish, uh, dish rag down. She could have put the broom to the side. She could have stacked the dishes to the side and says, I'm going to go and join Mary. And what I'm doing is really not that important. I can take care of that later. 
I'm going to take the advantage of Jesus. It's not that often he comes to my house, so I'm going to take advantage and sit down at the feet of Jesus and learn too. And so that's something that you and I need to do. Come to a place in our lives, a place in our schedule, that we need the Word of God and that we can never be so busy in our lives and in our day or week where we can not spend time in the Word of God. Wednesday and Sunday ought not to be the only time we spend in the Word of God. We need to create a daily schedule where God is speaking to us. And so, number three, a reduced desire to feed on Scripture includes trouble and or persecution. Sometimes trouble or persecution or both can take us from the Word of God and cause us to lose appetite for the Word of God. Going through trials, tests, tribulation, all kinds of things can happen throughout our day or throughout our week or throughout the month that will cause us not to read the Word of God. You see, afflicted persons may become so preoccupied with trying to get out of trouble. Many of us might be in trouble right now or might, might be facing a tribulation or persecution and we're spending most of our time and our day and our energy trying to get out of the problem we find ourselves in. But if you spend time in the Word of God, you'll find answers on how to manage and if not get out of your problem or be able to get through the problem. And so we cannot be so involved with our trials and tribulations from day to day where we lose appetite for the Word of God and find ourselves taking advice from other people, reading different books, uh, uh, and coming up with other ways to try to resolve our, our issue. So don't allow trouble, trials, tribulations, or things that you're going through day to day rob you of the opportunity to feed on the Word of God. Now, and it will if you let it. It, it. it will if you let it. And so persecution, problems, and trials, and things that we face every day can cause us to neglect spending time reading the Bible. None of us can recall times in where an issue or situation in life took up a lot of our time, a lot of our space throughout the day or throughout the week or throughout the month or even throughout the year where we had good intentions on reading and studying the Word of God, but the problems we were facing were so great in our eyes that it took up most of our time and energy where we even failed to consult with God and read His Word. In Psalm 119, verse 92, the psalmist said this, Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. He said, the reason why I was able to survive through my tests, through my affliction, is because I spent time in your word. I delighted in your word. I spent time in your word. I craved for your word. I made an opportunity throughout my day or my week to read and study your word. And because of that, when affliction and trials came in my life, it didn't take me down and take me under. Do you know if you allow it, your problems, your trials, and the tribulations you're facing in life can take you down and take you under? Where you neglect God altogether, neglect worship, neglect reading and studying God's word. So the psalmist says, unless your law had been my delight, if I wasn't spending time in the word of God, this situation would have, would have taken me out. But because I love your law, because I spent time in your word, I was able to get through that situation. So tonight, let that be our claim. Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. And so here's a, here's a quote. Grace grows best in winter. Did you get that? Because in winter, things become uncomfortable. It's cold. It's windy. Uh, 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 there's a lot of, uh, you know, darkness and, 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 and just a lot of people, I don't like winter, but during the winter time, 
a lot of things become uncomfortable and, and there's a lot of discomfort. Uh, it gets dark early. Uh, there's a lot of rough uh, weather that you experience. But how many, time, no, how many people know that during winter, sometimes God and grace can be at his best? And so this quote says, grace grows best in winter. Grace grows best in trials. God's grace grows best when we are facing difficult moments, if you handle them properly. The Apostle Paul put it this way, that your grace is made perfect in my weakness. When I am weak, then I am strong. God is able to demonstrate his grace and his glory in our lives, if we allow him to, when there's persecution and affliction. When we spend time in God's word, when there's persecution and affliction, God will reveal things to us. God will show us things. God will strengthen us. God will revive us while we're spending time in, in his word to get through the persecution and the trials and the tribulation. So I would suggest to you tonight, don't allow persecution and trials and problems and conflict and affliction take you away from God's word, cause you to lose appetite for the word of God. Another quote says, many men owe the grandeur of their lives to their tremendous difficulties. That's Charles Spurgeon. Many men owe the grandeur of their lives to their tremendous difficulties. Many people are where they are today from a positive standpoint. Many people are enjoying life because they were able to get through difficulties. And during their season of difficulties, it made them stronger, it made them wiser, it made them read and study the Word of God, and because all because of they were able to go through the valley of the shadow of death and come out of it, it put them in a greater position and, in a, and, and, and gave them greater opportunities. And so many men owe the grandeur of their lives to their tremendous difficulties. I hope that you can reflect upon your life and see where difficulties are uh, a prompt growth, that trials and tests made you stronger and wiser and appreciate the blessings of God and in many cases, cases open doors for you and that you are where you are today because not, of, not because of a lot of the things that you have done but because of some of the trials and tests that you were able to overcome. And so, do not allow trials and tribulations cause you to lose your appetite for the Word of God. Number four, a reduced desire, a reduced desire to feed on Scripture includes hurt and disappointment. Being misunderstood, being rejected, being betrayed by other believers, by family members and friends, being disappointed by disgraced church leaders, Leaders you had faith in, leaders who disappointed you because uh, they did things or you found out about things that they did that brought them down. Tragedies in life, failure, death of a loved one, all of these things, all of these hurts and all of these disappointments and all of these failure, failures can, can cause us to put our Bibles aside. And so tonight we have to examine, am I... Am I allowing the things or the difficult things in my life at this time cause me to put Bible reading on pause? Here's an interesting uh, passage of scripture about Peter. You know Peter, who was one of Jesus' closest disciples, one of his right-hand men, the, one, the disciple that took up for Jesus, that stood up for him. And Peter experienced failure in his life. He denied that he never knew Jesus. He said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And it did happen. And Peter walked away sorrowfully. And he failed at defending and acknowledging Jesus at that particular time. And so that probably weighed heavy on his heart. So the Bible says in John chapter 21, verse 3, 
Simon Peter said to them, this was after the resurrection, uh, he said to the other disciples, I am going fishing. I think I'm going to take a pause. I think I'm going to take a sabbatical. Uh, probably he was feeling the hurt and the disappointment and not acknowledging Jesus at the time he should have. So he says, I'm going fishing. And you know what they said to him? We are going with you also. So sometimes when we're hurt and when we're disappointed, uh, we allow other people, we distract other people as well. And we take on their attitude and their mentality about the word and about a, a scripture. And so Peter really wasn't interested in doing the will of God or the work of God. So he says, you know what? I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to go back to what I started doing at the first, you know, at, at, you know, when I first got started. So he says, I'm going fishing. And the other disciple says, we're going with you. So the Bible says immediately uh, they got into the boat. And that night, guess what? They caught nothing. So there's a lesson here to be learned. When you leave the word of God because of failure, because of hurt, because of pain, because of disappointment, because of betrayal, you will come to the realization that you are fruitless without the word. Jesus did say, without me, you can do nothing. So when they decided to neglect what their purpose and destiny was and go fishing, they were unfruitful. They caught nothing. But guess, guess what? Here comes Jesus. Here comes the word. And so the Bible says in verse 6, then Jesus shows up. Isn't it wonderful when you realize and notice when Jesus is on the scene? So Jesus shows up. And you know what he said to them? Cast the net on the right side of the boat. Cast the net on the right side of the boat. And you will find some. You'll find some fish. So they cast. And now they were not able to draw it because of the multitude of fish. You see, Jesus knows where the blessings are. He knows where the answer, what, what, what the answer is to your situation. So here they were all night fishing, caught nothing, left the word of God, left the things of God, and they said within themselves, we're going fishing. We're going to put the kingdom on pause, and we're going fishing. And as a result of doing that, they were fruitless. If you, want, if you want your life to be full of fruit, if you want your life to be prosperous, if you want your life to be a life pleasing to the Lord, spend time in the Word of God. Feed on the Word of God. Allow the Lord to speak to you and talk to you. Don't figure that in life, because of hurt and disappointment, that you can make it on your own. You need the Word to get out of your situation. You need the Word to overcome your hurt and disappointment. And so when Jesus shows up on the scene, he makes all the difference. You see, the word of God makes all the difference. Can you say that? The word of God active in my life makes all the difference. Yes, the word makes all the difference. And then there's another uh, a distraction. That is worldly associations. Do you know the world can pull you away from the things of God, from the word of God, from worship, from prayer, from studying, from your purpose. The world can do that. Passions for worldly games and, and movies, the pursuit of fame and riches, wanting more money, more money. All of these things sometimes cause us to become partners with unbelievers, with the world, and, become, and we become influenced by the decisions the world makes. Because we have taken our eyes and our attention off the word of God. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. For Demas has forsaken me. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. Having loved this present world. Notice why he, he had forsaken the ministry. Demas has forsaken me. He has left the things of God. He has left the purposes of God. 
he, have, he has left his God-given assignment, having loved this present world, and has departed for Thessala, Thessalonica. For Thessalonica. He has departed to Thessalonica because he no longer wants to be a partner in ministry. You see, Demas chose the corrupt value system of the unsaved world over what heaven values. And there are many people doing that uh, tonight. They're placing their value and their hopes on things that are worldly, things that will not last at the end of the day. But the Bible tells us to, to seek those things which are above, to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven. So we should not allow the things of this world and all that the world offers to lure us away from the word of God. The Bible commands us to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These things, the Bible says, are going to fade away. They're going to pass away. So we should not allow the things of the world to cause us to neglect the word of God. But if you're not careful, the things of this world can dampen your appetite for the word of God. And we should not choose the unsaved things of the world over the word of God. We should treasure the word of God. We should want the word of God over and beyond the things of the world. But tonight, the world has its grip on many of our lives because we're chasing after things that will eventually fade away. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word is eternal. So tonight, why not, why not spend time in something that's eternal, something that's lasting, something that will be fruitful and beneficial in your life. And that's the word of God. Hold on to the things of God, the word of God. It'll take you through your tough times. It'll take you through your trials. It'll take you through your valley. It'll take you through disappointment, disappointments. It will strengthen you and help you. So don't be like demons and leave the things of God and leave the purposes of God for the world. And then number six, sin. Sin can become a distraction in terms of causing us to lose our appetite for the word of God. Harboring unconfessed sin in your life and living a sinful lifestyle will cause you to lose your appetite for the word of God. It will diminish your appetite. There are many people who have no appetite for God's word, no appetite for worship, no appetite for prayer, no appetite for anything spiritual because of sin that's in their lives. But sin is only pleasurable for a season. Some of the good things that we think are good and that we're involved in right now are going to soon come to an end. And what will you have left to hold on to? So do not allow unconfessed sin or sinful lifestyle cause you to lose appetite for the word of God. So you and I must examine our lives. Where do I stand? What are things that, are, that, that I'm attached to that's destroying my relationship for God and destroying my love for the word of God? The Bible says in John 3, 19, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Because their deeds, of e because their deeds are evil. And so tonight we ought not to love, we ought to love the light of God. We ought to love the word of God. And so we must confess any known sin that's causing us to lose appetite for the word of God. Here's a quote from Dwight L. Moody. The Bible will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from the Bible. Will you agree with that? The Bible will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from the Bible. If you spend time in the Word of God, get a daily dose of God's Word. Hear God clearly each and every day. Follow the lead of the Lord. It will keep you from sinning. 
But when we neglect the Word of God, sin can easily creep in and cause us to do things and say things and speak things and look at things that's contrary to the Word of God. And so a good daily dosage of God's Word is going to keep you from evil. It's going to keep you from having a bad attitude. It's going to keep you from, from dealing harshly with people. Yes, the Word of God will keep you from sin. So let me wrap things up by sharing with you five ways you can get your hunger back. Do you want your hunger back tonight? Do you want to say, you know what? I've been, I, 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 I've been negligent concerning the Word of God. I haven't been reading my Bible the way I should. And I want to get back in action. I want to find time in my day, find time in my schedule where I'm giving God, his, giving God time and giving attention to the Word of God. Yes, the Bible says, Behold, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man would open up, I come in, sup with him, and he with me. Jesus is waiting and he longs to have intimacy with you. He longs to talk to you. He longs to give you direction for your life. He sees the path you're on and says, there's a better way. He says, I'm, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Five ways to get your hunger back. Number one, confession. The first thing you should do is to talk to God and confess your lack of interest. Just say to the Lord, you know, Lord, I, I, I've been negligent. I'm guilty of not spending time in your word. I put other things first. I put people first, my job first, my family first, finances first. I put the things I like first, the things I like, I, I enjoy first. I put all of these worldly things and all of these other things before you. And I'm confessing and saying, Lord, I want to do better. I want to do better. I want to give attention each day to the Word of God. So you start with a confession. You start with a confession. It says, Lord, I've lost appetite for your word. And in order for me to keep sin out of my life, and in order for me to be able to live a victorious life, I need to get back into the word. And then we need to eliminate the unholy. The elimination of the unholy. You see, your loss of appetite for God's word is due to worldly associations. We spend a lot of our time in the world, of the world, associated with worldly things, worldly people, worldly ideas. So if we're going to get our hunger back, we've got to cut some of those things loose. Ungodly associations, ungodly people, people and things that are draining our time and our energy where we have nothing left for the word of God or to spend time with God. So tonight, if you are associated with a lot of ungodly or unholy things that's pulling you, that's a, that you are attracted to, you need to cut some of those things loose and say, Lord, I'm guilty of spending more time in the world and now I'm sounding like the world, acting like the world, living like the world, dressing like the world. And I want to get my hunger back. So I make a confession and then I eliminate the unholy. You see, if you allow the spirit of the world to dwell in your heart, it will control your life. If you allow the spirit of the world to dwell in your heart, it will control your life. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separated, saith the Lord. For I am your God. And then we must make time for Bible study. That's how you get your hunger back. Make time for Bible study. So it's important to find moments in each day to read the Bible. So what you and I must do, go over our schedule. What does your schedule look like? What does your morning, your afternoon, and your evening look like? Where can you place time for the Word of God in your schedule? So make time. Good intentions will get you nowhere. You need to find a place and a space in your daily life to feed on God's Word. So you have to Make time. Number four, want to get your hunger back? Participate in a Bible study group. Yes, participate 
in a Bible study group. I know we're not able to gather now, but if Wednesday night is a night where you're home, just chilling, watching TV, watching your favorite series, and you know you, and you know you have not studied the Word of God or spent time in the Word of God, there's a scheduled event called Bible study that you can come to, that you can plug in, and says, you know what, I've been busy, busy, busy all day, and so on Wednesday night, I'm going to sacrifice the 30 minutes or the, or the 60 minutes. I'm going to use that time to participate in the Bible study group. So find a group where you can grow in faith, knowledge, and understanding. The Bible says we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So if you're going to grow in the knowledge of Scripture, in the knowledge of God's Word, in the knowledge of Jesus, you need by, you need the Bible and you need to study. It's okay to study on your own, but you also need to be part of a group that will encourage you, that will help you and bring light and understanding to the Word of God. And then you have to be determined, finally. Be determined. Be determined. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get started. Matter of fact, I'm going to start today. I'm going to start tomorrow. I'm going to look at my day tomorrow. I'm going to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give God a portion of my day, a portion of my time where I'm going to spend time in the Word of God. I'm going to find me a place, find me a spot where I'm going to take out my Bible, read and meditate on God's Word. I'm not going to neglect it any longer. I'm going to be determined to do that. Let me close on this quote. God is more glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. Do you know that the Word satisfies? And the more Word we get, the more happier we're going to be, the more fuller we're going to be, the more delighted in the things of God, the more we want to do for God. And when we allow the Word to satisfy us, then God gets glory out of our lives. God wants to promote us tonight from glory to glory. And the way to do that is to get in the Word of God, not only hear God's Word, not only read and study God's Word, and then you live God's Word. And when you live out the Word of God, you're satisfied and God's glorified. Amen? So this concludes tonight's Bible study. For the whole month of April, we've been sharing on how you can feed on the Word of God. And tonight's lesson uh, reminds us things that can rob us of our hunger for the Word of God. And I hope that these lessons tonight, uh, this lesson tonight and the lessons throughout the month of April was a blessing to you. And as a result of this, you're going to make space and time for the Word of God. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this study. I pray that something was said during this month that will help all of us realize where we are with you and where we need to go. So, Lord, speak to our hearts and help us to grow in the things that you desire for us to grow in. Help us to open the Bible because we know when the Bible is open, you speak. And when we close the Bible, you stop speaking to us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, our lesson theme for the month of May is how to handle fear. So I want you to pre prepare your heart and your mind for May's month Bible study. Are you infected by fear? Well, I want to give you some practical tools and strategies on how to handle fear. So that will be our Bible study theme for the month of May. How to handle fear. And what better time to talk about fear during this COVID-19 pandemic. So, if you enjoy the month of April, get ready for the month of May. And until then, may God bless you and may God keep you, is our prayer. Thank you for tuning in to our live stream Bible study. And I hope you enjoy the April uh, month series on uh, feeding on the Word of God. And so I hope you get ready and geared up for our next uh, theme for the month of May. So thank you all my live stream worshipers and uh, viewers along with the FCOC membership. 
Thank you for tuning in for the month of April. I pray that you were blessed by the Word of God. Let me give two brief announcements. Number one, our Beauty for Ashes uh, Grief Sh Share Support Ministry will have their uh, spring session, the first one, May 2nd. That's this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. You can go to the uh, church's website for more information. Again, you can also invite a friend, text a friend, email a family member, someone who's grieving loss, especially during this uh, season, COVID-19. Many people lost family members and uh, friends, and so you can invite them to participate in our uh, online uh, Beauty for Ashes Grief Share Support Ministry. I hope that would be a blessing to them. And secondly, we want to thank you for your financial uh, donations, your tithes and offerings, and your $69 seed offering. We appreciate those who sacrificially gave uh, this past week. If you didn't give, you still have an opportunity to do so. You can uh, share your tithes offering and your seed offering uh, on our Givelify app, our church website, or you can mail your check to the Faith Christian Outreach Center, our, our church address. Again, we thank you for your support for the uh, entire month of April that we've been live streaming. And we hope that you will continue to support us as we move into uh, the new month of May. May God richly bless you. And until next time, be safe and be well.